Another new tour card holder on the weekly darts cast now, and our next guest has made a name for himself on the university dart circuit in Sheffield, the ADC, and of course the Modus Super Series. But perhaps more importantly than all of that, he's also a loyal listener. Adam Warner joins us now. Adam, congratulations. Has it sunk in yet? Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'd say now just about it has, sort of three, four days on. Um, definitely after the after the first day and second day, I, I had no idea what had happened. And yeah, it was it was a it was, it was a, it's been a strange few days. We'll put it that way. Yeah, so has your phone stopped buzzing yet? Um, yeah, yeah, just about. It's sort of um, I left it on the Sunday night, um, and then sort of came back to sort on of Monday. I was like, oh gosh, that's that's quite something that is just going through it, and it's just, it's all lovely. Like so many so many nice words from so many people. Um, so I was very appreciative. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was a strange one. Um, but yeah, sort of approaching normality now. Okay, well, we love to hear that, and we'll of course touch more on your achievements from last week uh, in, in a moment. Um, so, but we always like to go back to the beginning of of uh, where it all started for you. Where did your darts journey begin? Um, so I've, I, I can remember being about sort of eight or nine years old, and we had a we had a dartboard up on the garden shed at home that me and my dad used to play on. Um, and it was it was interesting because it was sort of the hockey was sort of on a slope, but we'd we we'd play in all sort of weathers. I remember going in one day um, back into the house because it was snowing. So they're like, no, Adam, we can't play there. <laughs> but yeah, that's where it started. Then from then, just just sort of playing casually, um, no no competitive stuff really up until I, I started at university. Well, that takes us on nicely onto uh, onto the University of Sheffield and your and your and your darts there. Um, can you give us an idea about the the dart scene uh, at university? I missed out on this when I was at uni. There was no dart board in my uh, in my um, student bar. But uh, what was it like in uh, at Sheffield? Um, it was brilliant. There was I was quite lucky because there was already a sort of a, a good darts society set up and like, I'd, re- I'd recommend it to anyone who's at university and sort of looking for sort of an activity or something to do because you sort of meet people who have got a similar interest to you and it's it's just a bit of fun. Um, most most of the games we played were sort of just best of threes, nothing too serious. Um, then you have sort of competitions. I think our most famous one at Sheffield is called the Ham Cup where the, the winner gets a ham just before Christmas and what's brutal about that is the first round always is best of one so you have people travelling up sort of alumni from London and all over and they might get one leg so that's it's it's, it's good fun um, it's, it's not taken too seriously and yeah I really enjoyed it Did, did you ever win the ham out of interest? I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proud three time and reigning um, ham cup champion yeah I don't, I don't think anyone's ever won it three times apart from me that's probably my proudest achievement in darts to be honest but, uh, forget the tour card forget the tour yeah. card <laughs> that's what it's like I'd oh, love to hear that fantastic and what, what did you study uh, Adam? Um, journalism was my um, undergraduate and then I did a um, teaching qualification afterwards so I'm a qualified teacher um, geography so I was doing that in schools before lockdown mm. um, sort of only only stopped doing that sort of around 18 months ago I think Great. So I guess I, I guess you know, looking at the future, I guess it's trying to juggle all of that and uh, and look at what you what you can and can't do in terms of of the tour. I imagine. Yeah, yeah. So the, the last year or so, I've just been doing part time jobs, um, to sort of fit around the darts. I've treated the darts like a part time job. So when I go to an event, I'm there to sort of try and win and earn a bit. But yeah, you're right. The the balance is probably going to have to change now. I'm going to try and compete with um, the boys at the top. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll be able to do a few less shifts and spend a bit more time on the practice board. But we'll see. Absolutely, yeah. So we've got uh, time to think about that, definitely. Um, we'll just touch on uh, your UK Open uh, debut from, from last year. Firstly, your, your experience at, at Riley's when you qualified. Was that a, a nice moment? Um, yeah, I was sort of the first of many sort of scarcely believable things to be honest um i went there's a i was trying to sort of rally support amongst um other people from who i played with at university and sort of put a facebook post on explaining it yeah come along and i think there's a line on there saying so i just come along none of us are going to win it should be a good day out um and then obviously i went and sort of kept getting through rounds got to think it was the quarter final um my friend who was with me um johnny kirk came up to me and said um adam i think I'm not, I'm not joking, but I think you've got a good chance of winning this. So I'm like, shut up, go away. Um, and then, so yeah, luckily in the end, managed managed to get over the line. Um, 
yeah, couldn't believe it. And it was just such an exciting opportunity to go and sort of play with the pros. I remember walking into the room in, um, at Butlins in Minehead and it's all the sort of people from the bottom 64 anyway on the Pro Tour, like names and faces I recognise from, from the telly and from Pro Tour streams and stuff. And then just me, I'm like, what am I doing here? <laughs> but yeah, it, that, the whole thing was, was fantastic. But clearly, you know, wet your appetite to, to then, you know, try and get back there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that was the moment. It was, I've been I've been putting in practice like a couple of hours a day, but at that point when I won the qualifier, I've been doing it for about sort of six, seven weeks. So when that happened, I sort of, something twigged and I thought, well, may, maybe there's something to this. Maybe I should give it like at least a couple of years and see how far I can get. So it was at that point I really started taking it seriously and um, going to lots of local opens. There's a really strong sort of, um, quote unquote amateur scene around here with in, in South Yorkshire anyway with sort of names who are, have been on the pro tour before um, so you've got there's plenty of competition about if you want it yeah and of course uh, you do uh, get two more goes at the UK Open at the very least uh, on this uh, after winning your card so that's uh, another uh, bonus yeah absolutely yeah, looking forward to to going back and hopefully trying to, to win a game this time I think it was I think it was 6-3 I lost um, to, to Venig, uh, but two of the legs were 24 darts. I think he let me have a couple. I think he felt sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we look forward to seeing you back in, in that uh, sort of the cauldrons or boards three to eight, or even on the on, on the on the uh, uh, main boards as well. So uh, we'll have to go on to Q score then, of course. So uh, six wins at stage one, and then so you had enough points. Now, is that a difficult decision to make? So when, when you've got enough points, you think, right, I'm going to take the day off now. And is that is that what was your thought process there? Um, to be to be honest, it, it wasn't a difficult decision because you sort of you look at it and think of I've got another four days of darts to play potentially, um, and I was the prediction was that three points was enough, and I had I had five I think. So if I'd had four, I might have gone. Um, but with five points, I was, I was more than happy to have a bit of a lie in. So early start to, to get to the venue for about eight o'clock and start practicing. Um, so yeah, I was more than happy to have that Wednesday off. Yeah, well, clear, clearly paid uh, dividends. So on day two of stage two, this is when you really you know, made your move, you were a runner-up. What do you remember about that day? And were there any games that you were particularly proud of? Yeah, I remember being very lucky, I think, because I, play, I played some some like fantastic players. I played, um, see, uh, Nathan Gervin, who I was watching on the telly like a few weeks before, and he, he didn't play his best. And I just managed to scrape over the line. He did um, wire, and I mean wire a bullseye to beat me in that game I think he was on 1-2-4 the treble 20 plops in I was like oh no <laughs> but luck, luckily he missed it um, and then they like, Keegan Brown who's obviously got back on the tour but just lost his card and um, I think we both sort of dragged each other down in that game um, but it wasn't very good but again I managed to hit the hit the double to win it before he did um, and then sort of my luck run out in the final because I was, I was 5-3 up and um, in, in the deciding leg anyway Graham hit a fantastic 180 when I was on 167 and I had a go at it but it's a tough finish um, and he managed to get it but yeah I was I remember saying to my, my friends who were there I was sort of like sat down in between like the quarter final and the semi final and the final going oh what's happening what's happening um, and yeah just, just kept going yeah, it must be difficult to um, keep your uh, keep emotions in check. I imagine when, when you're in that situation, and, and of course you're going into day three. You, you, I guess you sort of think you've got enough, but not quite sure. Yeah, so, so day day three was hard because obviously going into day two, I had no points, and I was and I was I was half. I think I'd already looked on Booking.com for hotels for Milton Keynes for this weekend um, for the Challenge Tour, so. Uh, it wasn't too much pressure before then but then obviously I think going into day three I was top of the order of merit and you're sort of thinking right what have I got to do here and um, I drew sort of my friend Paul Mitchell who's um, I, I played him in the final of the UK Open qualifier we were just talking about and sort of just beat him so I was like the sort of the thing you want in a, in that sort of situation is someone you don't know so I saw the draw I was like oh, no and, um, and I got a good start but he went he took two ridiculous double double finishes out, got one fourteen and ninety six on two double nineteens or something. And I was I was stood there and oh no, here we go. Um but and again, I think he, he mismatched darts against me and I managed to take it. Um in the round after 
um, Lee Cox mismatch darts against me and I took it um, and that, that was sort of the point I wanted and I think I won one more game after that um, and then at that point I sort of I thought I'd done it then um, but not quite enough because I had to I thought I had to come back on the on the Sunday but in, in hindsight it was alright but it's a wonderful thing hindsight isn't it well indeed yeah so it was it was that win against Andy Jenkins uh, in, in, uh, yes. which, yeah, was, which, which, which sealed it yeah absolutely and um, so obviously you go back on the Sunday you think oh you know, I think I've done enough, but you sort of you went for it anyway, which is, I mean, it's such an unusual. I mean, I can't think of any other example in the sport where you would actually have to think about this sort of, sort of thing. So it's, I guess that's quite unusual. Yeah, absolutely, because you sort of go in thinking, you know, I could actually do my chances harm here, and I think um, Conan White had actually sort of played himself out of the spot in the end. Obviously, um, he he had to go, and sort of I, I felt like I had to go, but it's you're right, it's very unusual. And I don't, I don't, I'm not sure there's anything else they could do or a different way of doing it other than I think leg difference is pretty fair. I mean, you could potentially do it on number of wins or something because obviously there's there's people who turn up four days, win a game each day um, and then don't get any points if they lose their second game. So they might come away having won half their games and not having, not having any points. Um, but yeah, there's, there's numerous suggestions of how to do it and pros and cons with all of them. So I'll just leave it to them. Uh, really, I think. Yeah, absolutely. We've met many podcasts out of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so, just a word for your supporters, friends, um, and, and family that that have helped you, uh, Adam, to, to get to this point. Yeah, there's, um, there's just so many. I say the, the university um, of Sheffield sort of dance society. We had two uh, members down with me there. So, Ellis Turner, who's um, just started um, sort of in the refereeing side of things. He was. He was actually doing marking for the first three days and then stayed to support um, for the last four. I had um, Luke Davis, who came down to, to... He stayed with me for the week and watch it. I think he was more nervous than me for half of it. He sort of, I remember going for the double on uh, one game in a 5 all, and he, he walked up down the corridor because <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't stay and watch it. And I was like, oh, thanks, mate. Um, but, yeah, I don't blame him. Uh, so it was lovely to have those two there. And the rest of the society sending me messages, too many people to name. Um, Hannah, my girlfriend, she's been very, very supportive and just sending me messages and saying the right things. Um, obviously, my, my, my dad, I've played darts with my mum. Um, and also, sort of darts-wise, a big shout-out to the to the ADC and um, Steve Brown and Scott Hunt and what they've done because it was, it was through that route that I started playing and found events to play in and that got me on the on the Super Series, the Moda Super Series, which without that, without that money from that, I wouldn't have been able to afford to enter Q School. So sort of indirectly through them, um, that's why I've, I've managed to get the tour card. Well, congratulations again, Adam. It's, it's great to hear from you and uh, all the best on, on the next adventure of the next two years. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.